What's going on? Welcome back. We've arrived back to the hive. We're nice and safe now. Any bizarre allergies out there? I know a guy who's definitely allergic to oranges. A single bite, that's it. He's a goner. Tell me your wild allergies in the comments down below. Let's talk shop. Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. You already know what it is. Here's the top 10 deadliest substances in history that actually exist, part two. Number 10, golden toads. Don't let its little hands and tiny, cute smile fool you. The golden toad, this guy's pure trouble. Or rather, the alkaloid is on their skin. That's extremely toxic. Either way, you're gonna wanna avoid catching these guys if you're catching frogs one weekend in the you know, humid forests of Colombia. Otherwise, the batrachotoxin will interfere with your sodium ion levels in your nerves, resulting in your heart ultimately failing. Yeah, you thought you caught a toad. Meanwhile, you caught death right there in the palm of your hands. Their skin glands can produce this deadly toxin as a self-defense mechanism, so all the more reason to avoid this guy. Humans just produce sweat. How lame is that in comparison to this on-the-spot superpower? Imagine every time you go for a run, you sweat acid or toxins. That'd be lovely. Number nine, the giant Japanese hornet. Measuring two to three inches, that's like a small drone, that is horrible. This hornet carries a toxin that often leads to paralysis, kidney failure, and sometimes even death. And it's not a quick one either. That's the worst part here. It's gonna take a while. If you're in Asia for a vacation, keep your heads up, honestly. I mean, you're gonna see them coming because they're massive and disgusting, but look extra hard, you know what I mean? Remember when those hornets were a big scare back during the 2020 scare? On the news, they're like, hey, you're worried about this, but check this out. Killer hornets, they also might be a thing. Stay tuned. I'm glad that went away. Number eight, box jellyfish. Let's go under the sea for this one, shall we? We talked about blue ring octopus, octopi, whatever, in part one. These box jellyfish here, also not wise to touch. I would recommend staying far away. Australian box jellyfish have plenty of venom. It's super deadly, as all these are. I don't have to mention that, I guess. These are aliens, really. Jellyfish look so alien underwater. They're practically transparent in the ocean, and its tentacles can sting you with its, you know, millions of nematocysts. Peeing on your leg also won't solve this problem, sadly. I know, you probably got excited. You're like, can I just, you know? Eh? No, you can't. Australian boxfish carries toxins that cause extreme pain, paralysis, delirium, cardiac arrest, and even, yeah, death. All within five minutes. Yeah, you wouldn't even be able to get your goggles off, and then that's it, it's game over. One jellyfish has enough venom to kill 60 adults, so. Unless there's 61 of you going swimming, I'd avoid this. Number seven, cone snail. From a big underwater creature to a small underwater creature. Equally as deadly, let's do it. I'm never underestimating a snail ever again. I mean, yeah, they're slow, yes, they're squishy, and yeah, sometimes they're also extremely venomous. Cone snails use hollow teeth called redoulae that are sharp enough to penetrate a wetsuit. So, unless you're rocking knight's armor, going for a late night dip, you're gonna lose this deep sea tussle. The venom in just one of these mollusks is enough to kill 20 adults. I saw these little guys on planet Earth or something like that. It was so bizarre. Caught me right off guard too. So calm and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Number six, the Brazilian wandering spider. Oh God, here we go. This one's a bit different, but I had to throw it in for our halfway point here. Cause it's kinda, dare I say, fun in a scientific way. The Brazilian wandering spider has a bite that can give its victim um, a, that lasts for hours, believe it or not. That's a real fact. This animal is also dangerous. Its bite, of course, will hurt. You'll be sweating. Blood pressure will increase, hence, you know, that side effect. They're more commonly known as banana spiders. So I guess I can't eat bananas anymore. There that goes. These little guys have been listed as the world's most venomous spiders in a handful of years in the Guinness Book of World Records. And they hide in funnel webs. It's, it's terrifying, it just looks bad. If its name didn't already tip you off, they can be found in Brazil. And there's eight different kinds of wandering spiders. And my advice, personally, avoid them all. How does that sound? Sound pretty good? Here you go. Science is quite interesting here as well. They're trying to create the next Viagra using the spider's venom. The future is here, and it's filled with spiders in some way, shape, or form. Number five, tarantula hawk wasp. What an intimidating name, my gosh. The tarantula hawk wasp, okay. These wasps, for starters, they are huge, as you could have guessed. They're, again, they look like drones just flying in to take you away. They have bright orange wings, long legs. Their bodies reach about two inches long, which is horrible as well. They're found all over the world except Europe. So if you live there, nice, must be nice, enjoy it. Enjoy stone wobbly roads and the lack of these bugs. There you go. 
They love the Grand Canyon the most because it's densely populated with tarantulas. That's a horrible fact, there you go. It has one of the worst stings on the planet. Its pain was described as instantly debilitating. Bullet ant stings can last 24 hours, but these ones only last five minutes. Sounds like a better alternate, but these wasps are ranked on the highest in the pain index. Would you rather have an unimaginable pain for five minutes or just, you know, plain old awful pain for 24 hours? Which one? Comment down below. Me personally, I would do the five minutes. Get it done. Cause you know what? Either way, I'm probably gonna faint, right? Let's get over faster. Number four, blister beetles. This one sounds great. Wonder what he does. The blister beetle is chock full of cantharidin, also seen in the Spanish fly. So if we see any of these two, they're doing a heist. Get out of there. Back in the day, medical experts would actually use cantharidin to induce blisters. That was a common remedy. Just, hey, here's a blister. Hope you feel better. Let's see. These little bugs have this poison inside of them. Blister beetles are tiny and they often sport this metallic, beautiful green or blue wing cover. They look like a futuristic beetle. It's awesome. If a bird tries to eat one of these, well, stick around and watch for a bit because that beetle will come right back up and then continue on its little beetle business. On the outside, cantharidin causes a dermatitis reaction. And if you have the misfortune of swallowing one of these, well, like that sad bird in question, it could very well be your last meal. So don't be licking or eating any beetles. Back in the 1800s, people would lick them. Don't do that, don't lick beetles. We don't lick bugs here on Bumblebee. We just subscribe to them. Ah, you did it. Number three, Black Widow. Ooh, we've all heard about this one, but just how bad is her bite? The Black Widow is not only extremely painful, but it's incredibly toxic, obviously. At first, you may not even feel anything that bizarre. You may think you were bit by a mosquito, something tame, there's slight irritation of the skin at first, nothing too bad, but an hour goes by, oh, much, much worse. You'll be disoriented, dizzy, nauseous, your breathing will become very difficult. Other words that start with the letter D, all because of one little one little bite. Male black widows, they're much smaller and they contain much less venom than that of the female. A fact you may have heard already about the spider that you probably have locked and loaded in your head is that the female black widow actually begins eating the male while they're getting it on. Yeah, that's brutal. Top 10 ways to spice up your spider marriage. There we go, you won't believe number four, unreal. If you do get bit, just take it slow and breathe because we actually do have an anti-venom for this one. Number two. Comb stars. We do not have an antidote for this one. I'll tell you that right off the bat. We had a nice happy ending with the third one, pun intended, but now this one's not that fun. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. We have no idea how deep our oceans go, what's in them. I, I, I personally vote aliens, but we discover crazy new fish species every single year. I just click refresh and I'm like, oh, look at these aliens. On one hand, it's fascinating. We discover deep sea fish with bioluminescence that we never thought even existed until now. But we've also discovered new natural predators, like the comb star, for example. He's new, he's the new bully on the block. A starfish that contains tetrodoxin. Yeah, that classic toxin. Everyone loves that one, there we go. This deadly neurotoxin can again cause paralysis. For every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. That's a lot of mice. That's a lot of Stuart Little extras just biting the bullet just because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And finally, number one, area night. Yeah, we'll finish off with tiny crystals that you might accidentally inhale. That's terrifying, that's a new fear. Let's talk about it. What a way to finish part two. Area night in its natural form is fascinating as most of these crystals are, right? It's this fiber almost. It's a thin mineral that if touched will immediately break apart into tiny pieces that you can <gasps> inhale. First of all, that's not gonna feel good. If you ever had glass stuck in your hand, this is already gonna feel worse, just stuck in your hand, it's horrible. Arianite is part of a group of minerals called zeolites, and they're these hollow minerals with hairy insides almost. It looks fuzzy, but it's, I can guarantee you it's not, it is not fuzzy. Exposure to these can cause lung cancer, but luckily arianite mining stopped back in the 80s, but that doesn't mean miners are necessarily off the hook. Even when mining other zeolites, this deadly mineral can still be present in attack. It was discovered in 1898, but it wasn't until the 1970s where the Turkish government found out that it was actually lethal. So that whole time, miners were just <sighs> inhaling poison. They did a study on why there was so much mesothelioma in the lungs of villagers in the mountainous region. And this is the answer. This mineral was the cause for 43% of those deaths. The death rate for asbestos installers was around a 9.7%, just to give you a little you know, idea. I'm Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time on Bumblebee.